Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, another another video. So I guess you know I'm not at work. A um, couple reasons for that. I was off work last week um, and on vacation, so or took time off anyway. Um, so you got a bunch of videos from me. I had to go back to work this weekend on Saturday and Sunday, and uh, I, although I did have today off. Um, it turns out I ended up hurting myself at work on Saturday and Sunday and I hurt my back. So, um, I'm going to, this is going to be as short a video as I can possibly make it because actually even sitting down hurts. Um, so I'm, I, I try to get a doctor's appointment today, but I clearly cannot go to work and lift you know, 50 and 60 pound things and carry them around, um, with my back in the condition that it's in. Um, so you'll probably get another video from me. Um, you know, sooner than, than expected because um, the way my back is, I don't expect I'll be at work for several more days at least. The uh, reason I'm doing this now is um, VCLT thanks to Ben Costello. Um, went to my mailbox after not checking for a few days because I wasn't expecting anything in the mail. Found this thing stuffed in there, uh, pretty much taking up the whole mailbox, which was great. Um, totally unexpected. Um, from Ben Costello in Ireland. Thanks so much, Ben. Great stuff in here. Um, some things we had talked about and I had commented about, um, and, um, I didn't really expect that, that, um, there's, there's one thing here that I did expect because Ben told me he was sending it to me and that's guitarist Mark Rabot, I guess is how you pronounce him. Um, Ben told me that he had gone to a show of Mark's, a live performance and actually purchased a CD and got uh, Mark to sign it, which is very cool. Thanks, Ben. And oddly enough, I, now, I thought I had heard Mark Rabot before. Um, this album is mostly solo guitar. Lot, pretty uh, Most of it's live. There's a few tracks that have some, some accompaniment, um, but it's mostly live guitar. And although I had heard the name, I thought I had heard the music and I knew what to expect, but this is much more avant-garde than I ever expected. Um, and it's very interesting, and I quite dig it. Um, interesting thing, though, is that I didn't think Ben would like this kind of stuff. I have to be, I have to be honest. Um, so Ben apparently went to see him live, uh, which is where he bought the CD and, and liked him. And I, I'm, I'm just surprised. This is, this is pretty out there stuff. Um, and I'm kind of surprised that Ben likes him, to be honest with you. Um, definitely, maybe it's not quite Derek Bailey, not quite that far out. But um, when you think solo guitar... I wasn't really thinking Wyndham Hill people, not maybe that pretty type of stuff, but um, whew, I don't know what I was thinking now. Uh, pretty often got very interesting stuff and a lot of uh, acoustic guitar um, on here and some very clean sounding electric, very interesting album. Pretty out there though. Um, and he also sent me this, I'm a sucker for reissues. The Bitches Brew, Miles Davis, of course, 40th anniversary set um, booklet. Now, I, I have the Bitches Brew music. Um, I have it actually in LP form, which I never spin LPs anymore, really. Um, I tried to turn to another page. It didn't work. And, um, but I do have it in, in the CD form. And um, I do have it in a CD form in, in those box sets that came out that were chronological um, box sets of, of all his Miles Davis work. So in, in that set is pretty much the, the bitches brew music. Um, but, um, this is nice to have it all in one place. I'm a sucker for reissues anyway, and especially when there's books like this in there, um, you know, that give you a lot of history. Um, I just love to read this stuff while the music's playing. And actually in order to play the bitches brew album, I'd have to locate it in my computer in the playlist because it's kind of out of order. Um, so, um, it's nice to have this. There's a bunch of additional bonus tracks on here. So the Bitches Brew is on two CDs. There's a live um, CD from a Tanglewood live concert from 1970, which is which I did not have. Um, all, all, fa all famous names, guys like Jack DeJanet and Chick Corea and Keith Jarrett playing in the band. Um, and there's a live DVD as well that's part of this set, which again, I did not have. A 1969 concert from November 1969. That's uh, almost 70 minutes long, and a live track. Um, you know, all, all live. 
which I don't have. I haven't watched that yet. I did listen to the... I am familiar with the Bitches Brew music. I have to listen to this. Uh, this is probably remastered. probably sounds better than the earlier versions I have anyway, even on CD. Um, but I did listen several times to the Tanglewood Live concert, actually. And uh, the Tanglewood band was uh, Keith Jarrett, Chick Corea, Dave Holland, Jack DeJanet, Aerto Moreira, and Gary Bartz, the sax player. Um, the, the DVD performance has Wayne Shorter, what a band, uh, Chick Corea, Dave Holland, and Jack DeJanet. Wow, yeah, very young Jack DeJanet, obviously. Um, so, 44-page uh, book. I'm, I'm a sucker for reissues, and, you know, even, even the times that I have the music already, I tend to buy these, and, of course, this is packed with things that I don't have. You know, the booklet, the live DVD, the live album, the live CD, really good. I, this, this was a total surprise out of the blue that he sent this to me. Another thing that surprised, I guess, you know, I made so many comments, and I've, I've talked about Steve Hackett. He sent me a live, I'm, I'm going to watch this tonight. Uh, it's a live concert of Steve Hackett. I know I've talked about Hackett's acoustic music um, and how that's my preference now that I'm old. Um, but, um, you know, like especially Bay of Kings, which is one of my just favorite albums of all time. Um, but this is a live album of more his, I don't know, you want to call it rock stuff, but his electric side. Um, and it's more recent. Now, I have not every Steve Hackett album ever made. I have most of them. Um and I liked his electric playing in Genesis. I actually liked his first four, like the first four electric kind of rock albums he made that had vocals on them as well as instrumentals, but were electric in the prog rock field. Loved his first four albums, vocal albums, you know, in the prog rock thing. After the fifth one, he kind of lost me, tried to go a little more commercial. And to me, his vocal stuff after that. Um, doesn't match the first four vocal prog albums that he made. Even though I've picked them all up, some of them I've listened to literally once. Um, and although they're they're not bad, I, I just think that those first four that he made in the prog rock field are better than any of the vocal albums he's made since. Um, but there's a lot of good material, um, you know, from his Genesis days and from his first four uh, discs that solo discs that he made, and of course all the acoustic. Uh, instrumental stuff that he's done, I love. This is an electric band, but the good thing is an excellent choice, Ben, by the way, is most of this material on here is either from his early solo albums, the four that I love, um, even some of the some of my favorite Genesis tracks that Steve co-wrote are on here as well. Um, oh, a bunch of them. So actually, you know, Spectral Mornings and Los Endos by Genesis... Flying a Windshield by Genesis, Blood on the Rooftops on Genesis, probably could be one of my top three Genesis songs ever. Um, Firth of Fifth by Genesis he does on here. So he does a lot of my favorite things. There's only a couple later period things that he does after his fourth solo album in the prog rock thing, and they're actually tracks that I like anyway. Um, so it really works, even though I haven't watched it yet, all the tracks are listed on here. Um, it's 2004 recording. Nice band. He's got a five-piece band with a sax a flute player, which I love that. I love having that in the context amongst all the keyboards and guitars and stuff. So this is going to get a watch tonight. I'm sure I'm going to love it because I have heard Steve live. Um, I've seen him once um, in the electric phase that he did. I saw him after his fourth solo album came out called Defector in 1980 or 81. Um, and um, so I know he sounds good live, you know, and he's even done recent live albums, which I which I have bought as well, in the prog rock vein, which are, are really good. But, um, you know, when I first got this, I'm like, how did he know I like Steve Hackett? I, I, I haven't made a lot of comments about Steve Hackett. I've, I've passingly referred to Bay of Kings and a couple things like that. Um, so I guess he really picked up on some of the comments that went back and forth and retained them in his mind, um, which is incredible, because one of the things that I know strictly came out of comments that I, I guess, left when um, he was showing some of his things were um, the whole British kind of folk, folk rock movement. Now, I have a couple of L old LPs by bands like Steel Eye Span um, and, and that kind of thing. And um, 
even though I had never actually heard her sing, Judy Dibel, who was the first singer for Fairport Convention, wrote an autobiography that I'm very interested in reading. And I, I you know, it, it kept on getting delayed here in America. I'm not sure if it even came out yet. If, if it's finally been released here in America, it just came out. Um, I haven't picked it up yet. I'm very interested in musicians that have kind of left the field and aren't rich, you know, can't, aren't really living off of their musical accomplishments. And Judy Dibel was really only on the first Fairport Convention album, which I have actually never even heard until now. Wonderful. This is wonderful. I was incredible, incredibly uh, happy and, and joyful to receive this. Fairport Convention, their first five albums. Now, I've only heard a song or two over the years of Fairport Convention. I've actually read about the band more than I've heard them. I'm very interested. So many good musicians have come and gone from that band. There's really almost no original members left. There might be one guy now uh, who's come back to the band who's an original member, Simon Nickel. But um, this is really, you know, their first five albums. This is really the ones that built their reputation. This is the stuff that's considered their classic stuff. If you're going to get into them, these are the albums to get. Um, and the first album, just called Fairport Convention with Judy uh, Dibel on it, uh, singing vocals. And of course, Richard Thompson founded the band. And actually, this encompasses Richard Thompson's whole stay with Fairport Convention, where he really came into his own as a songwriter and guitarist. Um, and I've had, you know, Richard, I got a few things. Uh, Richard Thompson's solo but I never went back to his his Fairport Convention days. A lot of people, you know, people feel that Fairport Convention was actually his best work, even better than his, his solo stuff. Um, and I had heard of Liege and Leaf, the album, um, which was, you know, a very popular album at the time. Um, so we've got the, the first album with Jody Dibel. Judy Dibel was, I, I don't know if she was let go or quit. I'm not sure about that. But then Sandy Denny came into the band uh, with their second album, What We Did on Our Holidays, which I believe was a, a fairly popular album. And um, I could see why people really were drawn to Sandy Dent. P people loved her. People fell in love with her the second they heard her voice. And I could, I could hear why. She's got a, 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 you know, a beautiful singing voice, um, just, just expressive. And of course, if you know about you know, her tragic end and everything, you know, Listening to this stuff is almost hard in a way because you could uh, hear an almost sadness there or something like that, you know. Um, Unhalf Bricking, which is their next album, third album, Legion Leaf, which is considered one of their classics. Um, and Sandy Denny only made three studio albums with them, and that was it, and all three are here. And then Full House, which is their fifth album, where Sandy left and they decided to, to continue on without any female vocalist and Richard Thompson and, and Simon Nickel and, the, and um, the, the, the uh, violin player in the band really continued on so with those all male vocals at that point, quite a change from their first four albums, but um, Full House, which was their fifth album, their first without a, a female singer was really, um, well, good songwriting. The, the, the men took over the vocals and um, became even possibly even more instrumentally oriented. Um, here's the thing that stuck with me, not having heard a lot of their music, and I've listened to all five albums. Um, I was purely expecting very acoustic, folky stuff, um, and it's it's not. It's if it, I say it's electric folk. There's a lot of Irish jig style, almost fusion, uh, a lot more electric stuff than I expected. And even more so, much more instrumentally oriented now, you know, for their first four albums at the very least, and actually for their whole career, pretty much a song band, you know, and there's vocals in their songs. But there's a lot of instrumental in the vocal tracks, a lot of instrumentals on the album, you know, songs without any vocals at all, which really surprised me. And I found myself liking them much more than I actually thought I would. Um, and the first album is funny because it's much more electric than I ever expected them to be. There's this up, up tempo track on the first album that sounds like an early Beatles song. It's, it's, you know, the electric guitars and the up tempo drums and everything really sounds like a Beatles track, but there's also a song on the first album and I think it's called sunshade. I'm not sure. That's a real jazz, jazzy, really great jazzy track. I was so so much more impressed with them than I thought. And I knew of a lot of the individual musicians that have come out of this band. 
Um, and I know that there's a lot of talent that came out of the band, but of course didn't know the, the specific music of the band itself, except as a quote unquote folk rock thing. And, um, it just drove me to, you know, to read up even more on them. And some people considered them a British Jefferson airplane when their early, you know, when their first album came out. And I could see why, because, you know, there's some acoustic stuff kind of mixed in there, but it's a very electric album. And I could see why people would compare them to Jefferson airplane, which I think they're better than. Um, and I didn't realize that Richard Thompson had left it, you know, after only their fifth album. I thought he was with my computer slowing down. Um, cause I have a lot of space problems on my computer. Um, so okay, this, this, uh, this package here, the first five albums, this is the first five albums without any bonus tracks. So the individual CDs that have come out, if you buy them separately at bonus tracks, this is the, the original albums pretty much as they were. Um, but covers, you know, uh, Judy Dibble's entire stay with the band, which is one album, Sandy Denny's entire stay with the band and really Richard Thompson's. Uh, entire history with the band, with the exception of some, I know some live material came out uh, from this era later on. Um, but really, you know, without Richard Thompson, gee, it's it's a tough it's a tough haul, and I know they continue to this day. Um, but I was really impressed. But you know, even amongst these first five albums, they had a lot of personnel changes, and they survived um, because there's a lot of talent in the band. Um, Richard Thompson really came into his own with that fifth album, with the Full House album. Um, after having lost the, the original bass player as well as the two female singers that they had. Um, I'm really impressed by this band. You know, and the one impression I got listening to this stuff, which may seem strange, is I was a bit sad because there's not bands like this out there today. Um, there was a time when material like Fairport Convention, like bands like Fairport Convention, amongst the rock world, which was the popular music of the time, um, I would say we're fairly commercial, but we're fairly accessible. You know, bands that made music like this, whether or not it was Fairport Convention, could get played on mainstream radio. They would be heard. And in fact, that's how Fairport Convention got known at all, probably. You know, over here in the U.S., they were nothing more than, uh, you know, a very big cult band. But they got known by people. And you listen to this stuff, and it's got, you know, a lot of the 60s vibe to it, you know, you know, which is the time period it's from. This is all late 60s stuff. But I'm a bit sad that, that music has gotten, you know, even bands like this have gotten harsher and that there's not that ability to do the delicate, softer, more inward-looking kind of stuff, I guess, more introverted music. Um I know that's one thing that I know I'm always hesitant to go back and get into bands that I've read about, that I've known a lot about. This perfect example, Fairport Convention, um, that go back to the 60s that I haven't yet got into because I'm always afraid that I'm going to be a bit sad listening to them because, you know, they, they, they sound like they're from their era, which is not a bad thing. Um, but it also makes me reflect that, wow, I just wish that there were bands out there and that music like this would be more accepted in the mainstream now, um, you know, and, and it won't be, you know, somehow there's always, a, you know, there's always hard, hardcore music fans, like most of the people that would see this, who will discover bands like this, regardless of, you know, if their albums were from before they were even born, you know, but it seems like to me, the, you know, the, the only people that are going to discover the early Fairport Convention are these hard, hardcore people that would have discovered them anyway. You know, even if you can only buy their albums crawling under rocks or something, you know. Um, but, um, you know, that's that's the thing that sometimes prevents me from buying something from a band that I've read and known quite a, a bit about over the years, especially from this time period that I'm, that I'm afraid I'm going to get very reflective and sad because, you know, the, the, the music harkens back to an era that's gone, obviously. And it doesn't seem like anybody's going to be able to make this kind of music. You know, the weird thing is, is this was once mainstream. And it really is, if anything, extremely underground music. And it shouldn't be because it is totally accessible music. Um, so, you know, but I'm really digging this, you know, even if it does make me a bit, you know, sad and, and reflectful, reflective listening to, to this stuff, especially the slower, quieter, ballady things. I wonder why, why can't we have stuff like this anymore? 
Um, you know, and, um, you know, even though technically they still exist as a band, um, but wow, you know, for those folks sitting on the fence, well, you know what, I'd probably never even bothered, but, um, probably these early albums could potentially be up here in full on YouTube. Um, and you know, it's nice because I, I, you know, this is in terms of CDs, this is an area that's been very much lacking in my collection. Um, you know, this whole area and these are bands that I've read up on and yet never dived in or dove in to, to, to get their stuff. So I'm glad, I'm really glad to have this and really, you know, really all of their classic early albums are here. Um, the whole Richard Thompson era. Great. You know, it's a bit sad hearing Sandy Denny, you know, after all these years knowing her story. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, to thank Ben to give my impressions of the stuff so far. I know I like the Steve Hackett DVD, even though I haven't watched it yet, just based on the song list and based on the fact that I know he sounds really, really great live. Um, so I wanted to thank Ben. I'm going to go lay down again and take some more aspirin because my back is killing me. And um, thank, thanks for the stuff. I'm really, I'm really touched. And um, I hope everybody's doing well. And I'll, you know, be back more than likely in, a, you know, a couple of days or so. Um, you know, cause I probably won't be able to, to get back to work for a little bit. Okay, guys, take care.